Hey everybody. So uh, there's this video I, I wanted to do for a long time now and um, it's a subject I wanted to revisit, something that I've done in a few other tutorial videos, but this is um, uh, let's say uh, a retake on, on uh, exporting, so preparing, exporting and um, baking your um, high polys onto your low polys in Substance Painter. So I'm going to try to do this in two parts. First I'm going to talk about uh, the preparation in 3ds Max, uh, absolutely the things that you need to do in both your high poly and low poly models before you export them to Substance Painter. And then in the second part I'll try to do uh, the important things in Substance Painter while baking. Um, the reason why it's in two parts because apparently my streaming software, streaming slash recording software tends to crash and I lose the whole thing. So I'll try to do as little as possible in each uh, part and hopefully get this video out after take three now. So um, what I'll be doing is I'll showing you uh, an export of multi-part, so multi-texture model. Um, uh, with the possibility to bake all the all the textures that you need um, and then for you to be ready to texture in Substance Painter. Uh, and the important thing to remember is that uh, in my methodology I try to uh, do as much detail and as good as possible in my high poly so as to minimize the number of things that I actually have to fake the substance painter through fake normals and so on and so on. So uh, that's what I'll try to show. And the um, thing to remember is that I will be rebaking many times because I normally would like to have all my um, all my bake no uh, all, all my bake maps perfect before I start texturing. So as to if in any case I do need to come back to rebake, it's it's a very simple. Um, re-import, re-export, just uh, fix a few things and then rebake, and I'm ready to continue without having to go back and uh, fix anything. So I'll get right into it. I'll be using my 2S1 model that you saw appear in um, in the mod uh, a while ago. So um, I'll be showing with uh, two textures, just but you can similarly do it with uh, a number of other textures, like for instance the wheels and tracks all in one go. Substance Painter supports that very well, but for the sake of speeding up uh, some things, I'll just uh, show you here. So you notice my I have my layer display on, and I have a number of layers: uh, hull HP, hull LP, turret HP, turret LP. So, as you might have guessed, the whole uh, HP holds the high poly of the hole, LP low poly, and the same for turret. And basically, if I turn on the visibility of my high poly, and the same for turret, you'll notice that in both the low poly and the high poly um, layers, I've split the models up into a number of uh, meshes. Yeah, so a number of objects. And the reason I do this is that when I bake, I do um, bake by name. Yeah, and uh, substance is called matching by mesh name. And that allows you to avoid any artifacts uh, stemming from um, uh, model uh, interaction. Yeah, so when you have uh, uh, or two two meshes intersecting, uh, there's a very high chance that you will get uh, artifacts on your normal map there, uh, which are undesirable. So what I do is I split into some logical parts, and similarly the low poly gets the same objects, but in of course low poly. As you can see right there. And similarly, 
And that just helps me avoid any artifacts and I just try to pick up little bits and pieces which uh, do not intersect each other unless I do want to bake some details directly onto the onto the low poly then, then it's okay but in general this is the division I do and uh, it's great because um, I don't have to mess around with it you just get a clean bake straight away normally for even a large piece of a uh, uh, large model like this about three four will be fine it's just a matter of how many uh, objects you um, have adjacent to each other at any one time so about three four works fine for a model like this so with the high poly as I said I try to get as much detail as possible directly on the high poly just to get uh, the, you know a, a good bake and it means that I have to fake very little uh, in my uh, in my normal maps and my AO maps. Uh, and if I'm missing something, I just go back and re-add it to the high poly and rebake again. And then all my generated um, uh, masks and, and layers in Substance Painter will just pick up that new detail, and everything will be good. Um, you can see I also have these nice smooth edges um, done. I won't get into too much detail on how I do the high poly, but um, it's a mix between um, having sub D uh, geometry that I've um, basically did directly in Max and some pro Boolean stuff where I've uh, uh, used Boolean shapes to cut out very complicated shapes, objects, then transfer to ZBrush. There it's it was retopologized using zero, zero mesh, I think, or some some, some plugin uh, to get the topology right, and then smoothed using those technologies. I, I, I believe I've showed some videos of that before. Now, one thing about the high poly you notice, and that's the most important thing about the high poly, is that aside from the separation, I also have some materials applied, and these materials are sort of the green for the hull, metal green, I have some yellow for glass, I have some orange for cat eyes here, I have uh, sort of purple for, for plastic, so this pinkish color for plastic, uh, and so on and so on. And it helps because we can actually bake these colors down to your ID map in, in Substance Painter, which means that I can then use them for easy masking for where the layers and the different materials and masks will be um, very handy. But that's the only color allocation that I actually need on a high poly model. So I really uh, go down to every object and apply uh, the colors accordingly. Important bit is that it doesn't have to look like the final vehicle. You can see I use some bright green to indicate where I would have like a black void. Uh, I use pink. What is important is that there is high enough contrast between the different colors that when you apply the masks that it can recognize where the color ends and another color begins on your texture map. Um, so that's nice. This is what you have to do in your high poly model. That's about it. So before exporting it, what you do is you reset your X form completely and collapse it all down to editable poly and you should be good to export. Now to do that just select all your high poly geometry, export selected and I've already done this so I'm not going to do it, it takes a bit of time but basically save it as FBX and keep all settings as default so you don't have to do anything there. So that sums it up for high poly now let's look like at the low poly. Um, one thing you notice straight away is that I have two materials applied, one for the turret for all the turret objects and one material for all the hull objects. These materials are here and they're actually named appropriately hull and turret and the reason for that is that when you import this into Substance Painter it will create a texture set for every material it finds in the model in your low poly model. So it means that I've clearly identified that my turret texture will be a separate texture set than my hull 
and that's why I was saying you can do multiple um, you can do all your objects so with the wheels and tracks and everything just assign them different materials on your low poly and they will all have different texture sets which we can then export separately in Substance Painter so that's the deal with materials <coughs> um, like I said they're broken up the same way as the high poly and if we look at uh, the low poly itself there's really only one rule that you have to keep to for your bakes to come up great is your smoothing groups and well, I say one rule but it's actually two rules so first of all just make sure your smoothing groups look natural so if I have a look here this planar surface has one smoothing group this cylindrical surface has one planar group one, one smoothing group so this everything here on the top uh, and just make sure that you have hard edges where you're supposed to have hard edges and you have smooth edges where uh, where no boundaries no smoothing group boundaries where it's not supposed to be so so if i would remove that you you see the smoothing is gone so just make sure that that has the same smoothing group and this is very important to the shading of your model and there's let's say an extra reason for this so come back you will see that wow well, okay this looks a bit weird why is there no smoothing group here well when it's sufficiently planar you can actually keep it all as one smoothing group so this is one and so is this but where I have the border I have another smoothing group on this edge loop yeah it's all one smoothing group as well again this will play a major role in your baking because your UV map has to conform to these smoothing groups and that's the second rule all the objects in one texture set so this will be the whole texture set here must of course have UVs on one UV space. Uh, let's see, where's my. Oh my god, I can't get the UV modifier. This is outrageous. Uh, so if I open my UV editor, the second rule of having great bakes is that your map seams, yeah, so where you physically break up your different UV islands, has to absolutely correspond to your hard edges. In your smoothing group so where you have a transition between two smoothing groups that's creating a hard edge you must have a map, map seam so this this these two islands cannot be on the same this, this cannot be the same island they have to be separated and that's why that's the reason why this whole top surface was one smoothing group is that i could have it as one big surface here um, on the UV map. This rule has to be absolutely obeyed if you want your texture bakes to be perfect. However, let's let it save quickly. Important to keep your save on. However, the rule doesn't apply to um, faces that do not switch smoothing groups and that's good because with things like cylinders where it's one big smoothing group all around you would have to put an edge somewhere 
So when there is no smoothing, uh, no smoothing group change, you can put the edge anywhere. I could have put it on this. I could have put the BAPC here, here, it doesn't matter. I could maybe break it up into three if I wanted to. Again, the bake will not be affected. The problem is hard edges, and therefore that is where you really have to uh, keep an eye out. So you can see on cylindrical edges, on cylindrical objects, it's uh, basically arbitrary. You can put the, the map seam wherever you want, whatever. It's more convenient to hide things, for instance. Uh, so that's it for that. This rule is quite easy to obey in Max because uh, actually not that long ago they introduced uh, some tools to to help you with this. So let's select this object and let's just apply. A, let's say I'll do a plane on here. thing to break it. See, so this is this is now broken. Um, they introduced this flattened by smoothing groups feature. So with the object selected, what I can do is I can click on this, and it will actually give me a almost completely satisfactory result over the whole thing by breaking it up against the hard edges. So wherever I had smoothing groups, it already did. So all I'd have to do here is uh, do some editing on cylindrical shapes, you know, do some uh, pelt, pelt mapping or something. I would uh, maybe go around and do some smoothing on some of the uh, weirder geometry like this. Like I would apply smooth, for instance, relaxing. Uh, but that's about it, and all I would care about in the end is about um, packing my, my, my map as, as efficiently as possible. Uh, but at the same time, not really caring about where the, the various components end up, because my, for the large part of the maps that I'll do in Substance Painter are generated or um, using projection. So uh, where these parts end up physically in the UV map, not important to me. So I will delete this to keep my old UV mapping because it was good. And that's about it. The smoothing group slash UV island rule is the most important thing that you have to take care about in your model. So remember, separation, again, to stop artifacts from happening. Applying of materials to define texture sets. Yeah, different colors. And the smoothing groups. That is all. We're ready to bake. I select all the low poly stuff. Notice that I have my um, my uh, hatches hidden because some of the moving geometry or animated geometry I would like to do separately for them not to cast any um, AO inside these spaces. Uh, so I did them separately, but uh, it's for you to find the more con most convenient way to do it. Um, separately or together and then brush it out at some point. So export selected. LP again here I can show you physically that I do not change any presets. So all default options. Ah and don't forget do also reset export and collapse everything to um, to editable poly to ensure that um, the coordinates of all the objects are the same as in the high poly, so that when you load them into Substance, everything will match up nicely. Everything default, I will press OK. And I stop here to go into part two, which will be Substance Painter.